Hello, well it's Monday morning, uh, it's another busy week for the government. This week uh, the executive will be sworn in at Government House on Wednesday, so that takes place where the Governor-General formally gives the members of the executive their warrant, and then uh, that effectively makes us a government. We have our um, uh, first cabinet meeting after that on Wednesday afternoon, and then the following week is what's called the Commission Opening of Parliament, when all members of Parliament, all 121, come back to Wellington, they get sworn in, they take the oath of allegiance, uh, and then the following day we have what's called the Speech from the Throne, which is when the Governor-General reads out a speech prepared for him by us, it's our agenda if you like, uh, what we want to achieve over the next three years, how we should be measured and viewed, and then from there we uh, all file back into the debating chamber and uh, uh, have what's called the address and reply speech. So there a mo there's a mover and a seconder. That's a new backbench MP in both cases. So that's quite an honour for them and we'll talk about them a little bit probably next week. And then I'll give a speech and uh, the new leader of the opposition, whoever that might be, uh, will give their speech and away we go. So today we're announcing uh, the Cabinet, and there's some really interesting moves there. I think um, Stephen Joyce makes a big move up from number 14, I think he was, to number 4. He's taking the portfolios that are very economic orientated, so he has economic development, um, tertiary education, science and innovation and employment. So that's uh, a way of making sure that we really upskill our economy and um, lift productivity and the competitiveness of the economy. Um, De the Deputy Prime Minister Bill English retains obviously all of his portfolios that he had in the past, Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. Um, and if you go a little bit further down, the other interesting moves are uh, number five, Judith Collins moving up and taking the role vacated by uh, Simon Power, which is Minister of Justice. She's also Minister of ACC and Minister of Ethnic Affairs to demonstrate to ethnic communities in New Zealand that we really value their contribution and uh, we're now going to have a minister ranked at number five uh, looking after their interests. A little bit lower down at number seven, uh, we have Hekia Paratas taking the new uh, responsibility or new job for her as Minister of Education, so big step up and a big opportunity for her. And then moving down to number nine, Paula Bennett is uh, going to be the Minister of Social Development as she has been, uh, but comes on to the front bench. In terms of new additions to Cabinet, at number 18 is Nathan Guy, uh, at number 19 is Craig Foss, and number 20, Amy Adams. And outside Cabinet, new additions are Chris Tremaine, Joe Goodhue, and Chester Burrows. Uh, so hopefully, you can see that it's a good lineup. We've got um, people in some new responsibilities. Um, I think that's always good to make sure that the Cabinet looks fresh. Some people are staying in their existing portfolios, they've done a tremendous job, or they have a, a, a real expertise in that particular area. Uh, but for the most part, it's got a bit of a new look and feel to it, so very exciting. Yesterday, we um, signed up the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle, if you like. There are 121 seats in Parliament, so by definition, we need 61 uh, to have a majority, and we got that with our votes uh, of the National Party along with United and ACT. Uh, but yesterday we added to that by getting three more votes from the Māori Party. That gives us 64 votes for a confidence issue. You'll be aware, I'm sure, that um, if a confidence motion is held, if the government doesn't um, enjoy a majority of the parliament, then you've got to go back and have elections. So having those 64 votes is very important to us. Um, and each of the deals, whether it's United Act or the Māori Party, has a real uh, focus and agenda to it. In the case of the Māori Party, we're looking very closely at New Zealanders that are living in poverty and um, got quite a big work agenda there, helping people in those critical areas to lift them out of poverty, whether it's employment, health, uh, education, housing, all very, very important issues. Case of ACT, you've seen uh, the work that we'll be doing about, around spending constraint, and also, of course, charter schools getting quite a lot of uh, media coverage. The case of United, um, we'll be legislating to ensure that there's 51% always held of um, state-owned assets in the mixed ownership model, a lot of work around conservation, uh, with Peter Dunn, some, some work around flexibility in the retirement age uh, and income splitting. So, look, I think a nice combination. I'm confident the government will do well. We're looking forward to this week and next week, and then it'll be holiday time for a few weeks as everyone around here in the Beehive um, looks forward to just a little break to recharge the batteries. But we'll talk to you more about that um, in the next um, week or so. So that's the lineup for Cabinet. Hope you um, find it a good lineup. I think it's going to deliver great results for New Zealand.